<laughs> it hurts. Oh, it hurts. Oh, the smites. The smite healing's kicking in. I can just not let go of right click. Look at my health. Oh my god, look at my health. I can't lunge out. No, 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 no. I have potions. Oh my god, look at my health. I've never seen anything like this. What's up guys and girls? It's Vision. Welcome to the build guide. Alright, let's take a look at the build. Uh, the goal of this build is basically to summon out forged weapons up to your max stacks, which will be 12 in this build. You summon out 12 forged weapons, and then you're going to buff them with double void cleave charges. And it's going to weigh up their damage because void cleave's adding a lot of flat fire damage and extra ignite chance. This is basically the build. Now let's go over the skills. For the skills, we're doing Forge Strike. Forge Strike, we have 4 out of 4 in Light Forge. Uh, this is giving more attack speed to your Forge weapons. Also, adding 100% cooldown recovery so you can Forge Strike more often and on demand when you need to. 4 out of 4 points in Forged by Fire. This gives extra flat fire damage to your Forged weapons. 4 out of 4 in Well Forged weapons, which gives you extra 4 weapons. This helps you get to the to the cap of 12. It also gives your uh, it also gives your weapons 60% more duration. Uh, we do 1 out of 1 in Forged Master. This gives your swords a chance to become Great Axes, which hit in a larger area. And then we do 5 out of 5 in Heavy Strike, which makes your Forged Strike do 50% more damage. Also makes your Forged Weapons do 50% more damage. Next we'll take a look at Void Cleave. Void Cleave, the goal of this is to number one, get over here to the minion buffs, number two, get two charges, and number three, to pick up the crit vulnerability stacks for enemies. Uh, so I'll walk you through this side here. On the left side, we have one out of po one point, or we have one out of three points in Rift Flame. This is basically to travel. Uh, it gives you some ignite chance on Void, or void Cleave, but most of your damage is going to be coming from the minions. We have one point in Hellish Chasm, and then this is the important part here, five out of five in Molten Blades. Uh, basically, it applies five stacks of a buff called Molten Infusion, which gives your your minions hit by Void Cleave, plus 15 melee fire damage per stack, and 30% ignite chance per stack. Uh, we're applying five of those per Void Cleave, which we'll have two charges of, and uh, basically this node after it, Scorching Path, path which we're going to take, makes this buff 150% more effective. And what this will equal out to is about 200 extra flat fire damage on your forged weapons when you hit them with two void cleaves. And so to get the, the second charge, we'll do two out of three points in increased CDR, three out of five points in armor sunderer, and then we pick up the extra charge. Uh, and then lastly, we need to pick up the crit vulnerability with vo void cleave. You do two out of five points in into the depths, one out of one point in precognition, and then finally three out of three in rift maker which stacks three crit vulnerability stacks on an enemy, equaling out to 15% more chance to be crit. When you're hitting with two charges, that's 30. And basically, the point of this is, Sentinel doesn't have a lot of access to minion crit, and we're basically getting around that by making enemies more likely to be crit, and, uh, and then just stacking a bunch of damage onto the forge weapons. Uh, in the gear planner, I have plus two to Void Cleave, uh, with those two points, if you manage to get that, you'll want to max out the CDR so you can have this more often. And then you can put the point in uh, either more area and more damage on Void Cleave, which I would probably recommend. Uh, just because the more... It's not hard to hit your minions, but the more enemies you can hit with the crit vulnerability, the, the more efficient each Void Cleave would be. Uh, you can also put it into the armor shred up here. If you, uh, need a, if you feel like you need a source of armor shred. Uh, next, let's take a look at Multi-Strike. Multi-Strike's our mana generator. It also gives us some sustain. And it's also casting Smite, which Smite is going to be mostly for healing. We'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, the important parts here is you want all of the attack speed in Multi-Strike. The more, the more, the faster you attack, the more mana we get back. Uh, two out of five points in Initiative. Three out of points in Path of the Night to travel. And uh, we're basically going for Heated Forge here, which is it gives you one Forge weapon 
per armament stack from multi strike when you forge strike. And uh, we have it giving us four armament stacks, basically, with the extra stack here in Perfect Steel. And then an extra stack up here from Doctrine of the Anvil. And I can show you guys what that looks like. Where, uh, basically, you're multi-striking. You'll see I have four charges. And then you forge strike, and it summons four swords. So that means three rotations of this, and you have 12 forged weapons. And you're at your maximum. Let's take a look back at this tree. Uh, on the left side, we're going to go for the smite casting. Uh, on the way, we can take 5 out of 5 in Guardian Stance. That gives us armor per stack of armament we have. 150 armor, that's pretty good. Uh, 1 out of 1 additional sword and 0 stacks. It helps a little bit, but uh, mainly you just want this smite up here. And since we're talking about smite, we can look at smite next. Smite, I have 2 out of 4 in Holy Wave, 3 out of 5 in Righteous Fury. And the point is to travel down here to Righteous Flurry for an extra 20% attack and cast speed uh, when your smite gets cast. I've taken 5 out of 5 in Panacea for Cleanse Chance, and 1 out of 3 in Soothing Balm, 5 out of 5 in Grace. And this basically, when you are surrounded by a pack of enemies, and you're multi-striking, your smites are going to be going off and covering a large area. You'll see these gold pulses coming off. And that cleanses ailments off of you and your minions. And also does a lot of healing. It does a lot of healing. It helps keep your forged weapons alive while you're in the heat of battle. And uh, it does a really good job of making you and your minions also a little bit extra tanky. And finally, let's take a look at Ring of Shields. Um, Ring of Shields also benefits from the Void Cleave buffs. And so I've come over here. I've done 3 out of 5 in Banding. 1 out of 1 in Molten Shields. Um, this gives your shields a chance to ignite enemies when they're hit. And with the Void Cleave buff, you'll remember they're getting a bunch of extra ignite from the Molten Infusion. And that's getting added into their chance to ignite. And then also, uh, 1 out of 1 in Immolation for the Fire Aura. It, it just helps. Your Forged Weapons are going to be doing most of the damage, but this helps a little bit with like wearing down ranged enemies that are hitting your shields. And also just like doing a little bit more damage to, to enemies that might surround you. Uh, also, we do 3 out of 3 in Enduring Defense for Duration. Adds an extra 6 seconds to your Ring of Shields. Uh, 2 out of 2 in Reinforcement for 2 extra shields to give you 5 total. 2 out of 4 in Healing Shields. Uh, this makes your shields heal you a little bit. Uh, this is a nice little amount of sustain, but really what's giving us the good sustain is this Martyr Shields down here, but we'll get to that. First, got to do 3 out of 4 points in Ages of Life. Uh, this increases the amount of healing that your shields do. And then finally, 4 out of 4 in Martyr Shields, which makes your shields heal you for 200 health anytime one of them dies, which is a lot. It's uh, and not an insignificant amount of healing. And uh, finally, we take 1 out of 1 in Collateral Damage, which makes your shields shoot shrapnel when they die. Also getting the buff from the Void Cleave. There's some nice synergy there. So that's the skills. Alright, so next let's look at the passives. Uh, we'll start with the Sentinel Tree. We're going to take 8 out of 8 in Fearless for the Vitality. Really nice stat to get the extra health. 5 out of 5 in Armor Clad for the extra armor. And most importantly, less damage taken by, from nearby enemies. Damage reduction in this game is uh, a fairly rare stat, but it's something you always want to pick up when you can find it because it's uh, so hard to find usually. Uh, we're going to go 5 out of 5 in Valiant Charge. This gives you some extra health. Also, movement skill recovery rate. Since we're not specking into lunge, this little bit of extra cooldown recovery kind of makes up for, for what you would have got in the lunge tree if you specced into it. Um, five out of five here in time of faith, or time and faith. This gives your uh, multi strikes a little bit of extra mana back and health back on hit. Most important parts of the mana. This makes it so you can void cleave and forge charge as you need to. And uh, finally, 5 out of 5 in Blade Master. This is going to give you 30% more attack speed and cast speed because we're going to be using a two-handed axe. Um, these, these five points you can kind of wait on until later on once you start picking up a bit more of these um, more, more defense-oriented points in the Forge Guard tree. Like once you've unlocked the Ring of Shields and all of that, you can come back here when you feel like you need a little bit more offense. Or you can rush it. That's fine, too. Uh, we'll start in Paladin next. Paladin, I've done 5 out of 8 points in Defiance. 
uh, that we scale with the attunement, but uh, also what's really useful here is the elemental resistance. It helps make up for uh, some of the resistance we're going to be lacking on gear and uh, kind of covers the rest of your bases there. I do 6 out of 10 points in Valor. I basically start 5 points here to rush for the Endurance in the next node, which is Blinding Light. This 14% Endurance is what's going to help us hit Endurance Cap later on once we start getting our gear. And uh, when you have one, le one point left over, I'd put it in Valor here. Uh, basically, you're getting 15 health points per point of this. It's the most health you can get for one point, so it's super valuable to have. Uh, we'll look at the Forge Guard tree next. I've done 10 out of 10 in Battle Hardened. And basically with this node, you're getting 40% physical resist resistance when you're hit, which is a pretty large amount, over half of what you need to get to cap. 60% uh, increased armor when you're hit. Pretty, pretty nice passive here to have. It makes you a little bit extra tanky. Uh, we've got 10 out of 10 in Guardian for the for the health, 120 health from that. It's pretty nice. 8 out of 8 points in Iron Judgment. It's giving you the attunement, which you're scaling with. Armor for yourself, armor for your minions. I've got 10 out of 10 in Folded Steel. It gives your forged weapons a little bit of extra flat damage, which doesn't hurt. Also, gives you 2 extra forged weapons onto your cap. Once again, helping you reach the, the 12 forged weapon charges. Uh, I've got 6 out of 6 in Might for the Strength, but more importantly, the percent increased health there, 12%. I've got 1 point in Flawless Defender to travel, uh, 1 out of 8 points in Osprex Bane to travel, and then we have 3 out of 3 at the top here in Shield Crafter, which uh, gives your minions more health, or increased health, 150% increased health and armor. And a 3% chance when hit to cast Ring of Shields, which is kind of OP. 3% doesn't seem like a lot, but when in Last Epoch, when you're getting hit by a lot of things, uh, the 3% happens more often than you would think. It's pretty nice to have. Uh, and then the shields are just more healing, more projectiles blocked, more damage overall. Uh, 5 out of 5 points in Infinite Bulwark. Uh, you get 100% increased armor when you use a potion, and makes you have increased potion find. Which is pretty nice. Uh, five out of points in Liquid Iron, which when you drink a potion, you get 15% extra physical resistance and 15% uh, less damage over time taken. And this gets doubled. This is doubled if you use a potion. And then I just have one out of one point in Avatar of War, which gives you increased melee damage per hit taken in the past 10 seconds, or past 10 seconds, which is just a nice little boost to have for one point. All right, we can take a look at the items next. Uh, my character's gear is kind of crap because this was made uh, over a four-day period in the weekend tournament. I can run through this real quick, but then we'll look at the build planner so you have a better idea of what you're doing. Uh, basically, it's grabbing a lot of vitality, a lot of flat health, uh, or a lot of percent health, I mean, and a lot of percent armor on suffixes, you can see through here. And uh, anytime there's room, we're basically grabbing minion damage, minion health with a priority on minion damage, just because minions... Our minions are a little bit tankier because we're healing with smite, so I've leaned a bit more into the damage. And uh, we're using wing guards here just because the attack speed's really nice. And I'm not too worried about crits because my minions are doing the crits. Uh, one of the cool things, too, about Forged Weapon is uh, they get the stats from your weapon. And if you use this Radiant Axe, your uh, Forged Weapons can have up to 15% fire pin. A little bit of extra melee fire damage, which is nice on the implicit. Uh, so all that flat fire damage they're getting is going to penetrate through enemy resistance, which is pretty nice. And then you're going to basically have a bunch of attack speed. And uh, I'll show you, this is not a great weapon. We can start with the weapon, how about that? Uh, for the two-handed axe, it has to be a two-handed axe so we can use Void Cleave. Uh, you want critical strike chance, just not base critical, just critical strike chance. Mace Critical does not work with the Forged Weapons, but Critical Strike Chance can scale that a bit. And with the, the Crit Vulnerability we're applying with the Void Cleave, this is what's going to help your, your Forged Weapons do some, some big crits. Uh, we have some melee attack speed on here, so the swords attack faster. The faster they attack, the more damage they do. Uh, minion melee damage on the suffix. And then most importantly here is the less damage taken on crit. And uh, this basically lets us get around building crit avoidance. This rolls up to 50% less damage taken on crit. 
and uh, it, and at 50%, you're taking half damage from crit, which is basically just a regular attack. And the cool part about that is it also gives it to your forged weapons, so you don't have to use like a ribbons of blood or something like that to make your minions crit immune. It, it gives them a lot of extra survivability. Uh, we can go up to helmet next. Helmet, you want vitality on the prefix and CDR. CDR is pretty nice for the void cleave. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you get enough cooldown recovery on Void Cleave and on the helmet, you might be able to get three stacks of the Molten Infusion off, which would be absurd. Uh, some crazy damage. Um, percent increased health, percent increased armor on the suffixes. Uh, we'll take a look at the Bone Amulet. Bone, amul bone Amulet's really nice for the physical resistance and necrotic res. Um, I have minion damage on the prefix and fire pin to help your own fire attacks like uh, do a little bit more damage. Uh, mostly it's the minion damage, though, that's that's carrying the build. Uh, flat health on the suffix and necrotic res. Uh, on the chest, I have vitality, increased shred armor effect. You could switch this out with a, a plus two to forge weapon if you wanted to for more area or that sort of thing. Um, on the suffixes, we have increased health and increased armor. Uh, next, we'll look at the rings. We're going coral rings for the vitality. Uh, that's a lot of extra health to have. Flat health on the suffixes. Uh, minion damage increase and increased minion health on both rings. And then one of your rings will have poison res. One of your rings will have void res. And that's going to make up the gap that you have. Uh, for the belt, we're doing increased minion damage, increased minion health, hybrid health, and percent increased health on the belt. Um, wing guards, this is for the attack speed. The haste is pretty nice too. The downside is you don't do critical strikes, but like I said, uh, most of your damage is coming from the minions, so you don't worry too much about that. We're doing Heaborian Boots, because this build is going to be a little bit short on cold res. This makes up for that. Uh, tier 5 move speed on the prefix, vitality. Uh, hybrid health, also priority. Hybrid health, you can only get in a few slots. One of them we gave up, so it's pretty important to have on the belt, or the boots, I'm sorry. And uh, also percent increased armor on the boots. Um, your relic is pretty flexible. I went for the minus three melee mana cost. Um, the downside of smites on multi strike is that uh, your smites cost three mana. Multi strike is going to be making more than that back, so you will be mana positive, uh, but it will drain a little bit. This this minus three to melee mana cost just makes your other melee skills not so expensive so you don't have to be so like stressed about mana being being too low the, the minus three helps a little bit uh but i have plus two to void cleave on here minion damage cold res the cold res combined with the heaborian boots gets you capped uh frailty on hit on the suffix to make enemies do less damage and uh that is the gear for blessing or for for uh idols uh there's not too many idols that benefit this build really um the best I, I found that synergizes with this is increased area with Void Cleave. And like I said earlier, the more area you have on the Void Cleave, it's not so much to hit your minions, that's going to be pretty easy to do. It's to apply crit vulnerability to, to larger packs. And then uh, percent increased armor on the suffixes. Uh, we went with the 2x1s here instead of a, a 3x1 because you can get vitality on these. Um, Vitality, Poison Res, Vitality, Void Res. Uh, just basically, I want Vitality. That's the main stat I'm looking for on these 2 by ones And then the resistances on the suffix is to, to make up for some, some area here where you might be under cap. And then the one by one Lagonian Idols, we have Flat Armor and Health on all four. For Blessings and the Black Sun timeline, uh, you benefit the most from Flat Health. It makes you a little bit tankier. Uh, if you get close to this gear, you're going to be looking at 2,500 to above 3,000 health with between like all the hybrid health and percent increased. Uh, so you get a lot of value out of this, this flat health. Ending the storm, we're going to go lightning res. We get fire res pretty easily from just being a sentinel. We get cold res here. And so uh, the, the ending the storm blessing, we're going to grab the lightning res, and that makes up for the third elemental resistance. So we don't have to gear for elemental res. Uh, Reign of Dragons. I have I've taken minion all resist here. Some other options might be slow on hit Or if you're struggling to get your resistances capped all res for yourself is pretty good as an option there uh, I've just went with minion all res. That's what I'd prefer 
Uh, from Age of Winter, I've taken percent increased armor to, to buff up all of the armor you have. And uh, finally here for the last one, I've taken Endurance. This is the Endurance from this Blessing, plus Endurance from Wing Guards, plus the Endurance from Paladin Tree. Uh, those three things combined are going to be able to give you the Endurance cap. And so those are Blessings. And uh, next we can go over how to play the build. Uh, I went over this briefly already. Uh, basically, you can turn your Ring of Shields on autocast. Let's go to a monolith here. Alright, and so basically, when you get into the monolith or arena, wherever you're at, you want to quickly get weapons out. So you start multi-striking. Get your swords out. You want to try to get to 12. And then you just start buffing with Void Cleave. Your, uh, your minions are going to do most of the work. You just go in, you Void Cleave enemies, put the crit vulnerability on them. Uh, your lunge is to, to get you out of difficult situations, but uh, really you're going to find this build's pretty tanky. You don't end up in too many bad situations. And uh, so as I'm going here and I'm multi-striking, you'll see these smites are going off. The smites are uh, cleansing ailments off me, keeping your minions alive. You'll see they're all pretty topped up. Uh, it's really a pretty relaxed build to play. You have a lot of buttons to push, but really you're just making sure your, your forged weapons are always capped. Every pack or two, summon out another four just to make sure you're not dropping below your, your cap of 12 up there. And uh, you kind of just want to... You kind of want to watch for Void Cleave to have the two charges. It's the two little white dots above it. And when it has two charges, you group all your minions up. And you vo double Void Cleave. Puts the two stacks of crit vulnerability on the enemies and gives your, your minions the, the two charges of the Molten Infusion. That's basically the build. Uh, I hope you guys have fun with it. If you play it, let me know what you think. Uh, it was a pretty interesting build to play in the tournament this weekend. It's very tanky. It's very tanky. Alright, so basically that's that. In the description I'll have a link to, th to this character's uh, build and gear. I'll have a link to the ideal, ideal build and gear, also in a planner. I'll have a link to a leveling loot filter, and then also a strict filter for endgame. And that's that. If the video helps you, if you like the guide, let me know down in the comments. And if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you have fun with the Minion Master Forge Guard. See ya.